Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. I uh, had another video planned for today, but there's something that I need to vent about a little bit. Uh, you may remember a couple weeks back, Mark Zuckerberg was testifying in front of like Congress or something, and you know, and everybody got all worked up. You know, people were like, I don't believe that it's right for Facebook to be gathering so much of our private data. I was kind of going like, Facebook has been around for 14 dang years. And the entire time, do, do you know how Facebook actually came into being? Because the story actually goes something like this. Mark Zuckerberg, who was in college at the time, decided to make the Facebook. And of course, he was kind of slightly evil about how he went about doing it. And suddenly somebody got wind of this thing and uh, supposedly the it was like the dude who made Napster hooked up with Zuck and said the Napster dude was like hey I know this like venture capital company and like we'll fund you and you can like you can like take it global man and you know like venture capital funding do you know that like the cia actually has its own venture capital companies venture capital companies that they use to fund things you know kind of like you scratch my brat back i'll scratch yours so it's like what did anybody think was going to happen with that i mean it's like all of facebook you know the big thing with facebook was uh the, the great idea that Zuck had was, I'm going to put relationship status on there, right? And what does everybody do when they go on Facebook? Well, they click and they look at everybody else's photos and everyone has like a fake photo of kind of like the, you know, the Yulia Skripal thing where all the photos we see of her are from like 20 years ago that don't actually look like her today. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much Facebook, right? Using, you know, basic human psychology and biology and yada yada and of course then they hoover up all kinds of data and collect it right so yeah venture capital funding and do you remember it was a couple years ago there was this big thing that happened where basically it turned out that the nsa was spying on, on americans and everyone else and everyone was like no that's oh my god it's so horrible and the nsa was like no we're not actually spying we're not spying on americans what we actually did was we traded some agents with Britain. We got the British agents to come sit. <laughs> we got British agents to spy on Americans. And we, we had some of our American agents spy on the Brits. And then we just happened to exchange that information. So technically, we, the NSA, we're not actually spying on Americans. We're allowing the Brits to spy on all of you. So it's okay, right? Yeah, that NSA. This is the same NSA, of course, that designed the SHA-1 and SHA-2 hashing algorithms, which are used for, like, you know, cryptographic stuff, basically privacy and security features, especially for, like, online sites, right? And now they've moved on to SHA-3, but, but uh, SHA-1 and 2 were actually uh, effectively designed and promoted by the NSA. Now, why do you think that might be? Everyone's like, no, no, it's like so mathematically secure, you can't possibly like crack it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, right. And of course the NSA said, you guys want to be safe and secure, right? So you should use these hashing algorithms. It's like, but then there was the whole big thing a couple of years ago where they're like, oh, by the way, we're spying on you. So gosh, I don't know. Do you think maybe the NSA actually had a way around these hashing algorithms? from the get-go. Uh, another recent news item was, and I think it was May 14th, it was discovered that PGP encryption, which is used for emails and stuff. Uh, oh, by the way, there's kind of like a little flaw in PGP. There's a way around it where basically you can decrypt encrypted emails and retrieve the plain text version. Now, I've been saying this for freaking years. <laughs> because why I mean you know how it works right like the US government says like no you are not allowed to take that encryption algorithm and export it you can't email it to anyone you can't put it on a USB stick and cross the border with it but PGP which was like supposedly 
you know, super secure and like controlled and everything, everybody was using PGP all over the world, right? Why do you think that is? Maybe because there was a known flaw in it from the get-go. So all these people out there who are trying to protect their privacy by encrypting their mails weren't actually doing anything of the kind. And the whole thing is basically this extraordinary waste of energy. It's like the, the next thing that came up was some friends of mine said, you know, don't use DuckDuckGo. Why not? Well, okay, we all know that Google you know, Google's tracking everything, everybody. You know, if you have a, if you have an Android smartphone, as I, as I mentioned in my video uh, about when, when I switched to a dumb phone, you know, oh yeah, you know, Google, you take the phone and even when it's off or, or rather the, the, when it's in airplane mode and, you know, the radios are off, it's still tracking everything you do, tracking the position of the device, the acceleration of the device, and it records its last known location. And from that data, the next time you connect it to a network, it shoots that data up to Google. And from that sort of like metadata, you can actually reconstruct exactly where the person went and what they did, right? That's kind of absurd, right? Yeah, that Google. People don't want to use Google search engines, so they use DuckDuckGo. And the reason everyone is up in arms now about DuckDuckGo is because DuckDuckGo actually takes Google search results and kind of filters them and removes all the privacy violating things and they, they don't they claim to like they're not storing your IP address and they're not you know tracking you in any way. They sort of filter all the evil Googleness and just give you the Google search results. Okay, that sounds great, right? Well now everyone is worked up because it turns out that DuckDuckGo is using AWS, Amazon AWS, the Amazon Compute. You know, basically Amazon got into the business of offering uh, computational services, servers, and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? So now everyone is going like, no, I'm not going to use DuckDuckGo anymore because it's evil. It's using Amazon. And, you know, we need to have a little talk. <laughs> it's true. It's probably better to use DuckDuckGo than Google because Google is like mega tracking everything you do and Amazon, you know, AWS, pretty sure it's tracking everything you do as well, but in a different way, right? Uh, it's kind of like having a smartphone versus, smartphone versus a dumb phone. If I have a smartphone, there's all this extra tracking that Android is doing and shooting this information up to Google. And when I, when I posted my video on that, people were replying and saying like, yeah, but you knew you can like triangulate any phone and, and, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, I know you can triangulate any device that is basically a radio transmitter. But the point is that if you use a smartphone, it's gathering all this extra data and it's making it extremely easy for you to be tracked. If you have a dumb phone, that data gathering is not occurring. Yes, the phone can still be triangulated. Um, yes, the phone can still connect to, um, I think it's called a Stingray, where it's basically a fake base station set up by some spy agency. So your phone thinks it's connecting to a cell tower, but it's not. It's actually connecting to the, the spy, the spy uh, agency's fake tower. And oh my God, they're doing evil things. That's possible with any kind of phone. The point is you just make it a little bit harder to be tracked. And that's exactly what DuckDuckGo does. It makes it a little bit harder. All your information is not being sent directly to Google. Sure, it may be going to Amazon. Um, yeah, okay, but you know, you know, should you use Baidu or Yandex instead? I guess if you want to, but you know, there comes a point where you have to realize that as I've said for years, there is no such thing as privacy or security on the internet. It does not exist. It has never existed. The internet began as something that was wide open and as it became more and more popular, basically all these intelligence agencies partnered up with these, these sort of you know, startup companies and suddenly we have Facebook and everything you do can be tracked and is being tracked. Of course it's being tracked. Uh, we have Amazon where literally everything you buy is is i mean you all know the amazon ads right you're 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 looking at amazon ads and and they you look at some some product right and then you go to like all these other websites you're surfing reading the news or something and you keep getting those dang ads just pop up again and again it's like it keeps throwing the same product in your face cuz you didn't click the buy button they want you to go back to they want you to go back and buy it right 
and <laughs> it's like you know if you've shown me that that image of that product 75,000 times and I haven't actually clicked the buy button chances are maybe you want to show me a different product because maybe I'll want to buy that one but the thing is that you know there's never been privacy and there's never been security and you can take certain steps to help protect yourself but when the likes of you know there was the NSA spying scandal and then there was the CIA spying scandal and you've got all this this stuff going on and then it comes you know this whole Facebook thing comes up and everyone is just like up in arms and like so offended that you know Mark Zuckerberg is spying on them and it's like yeah where have you been for the past 14 years of course you're being spied on but you know at the same time you wouldn't be watching this video right now if it wasn't for the internet people all over the world have actually come to have, have have come to know each other and sometimes even met in person and people find like you know like partners on the internet and and think about the insane amount of knowledge that the internet actually provides you know there was this recent story about a woman who um, she was in an abusive relationship I think I think the story goes she was in a, an abusive relationship and she had like three kids or something and over the course of like a year or two she watched YouTube videos and built a house for her family <laughs> now that sounds a little crazy to me but I wouldn't doubt it because when I don't know how to do something I just hop on the internet and search and you can find all kinds of information do you want to rebuild an engine for a car there you go there's everything you need to know like the amount of information about absolutely everything that is available to everyone just like right at your fingertips is simply phenomenal there's this massive uh, it's it's like a, a, a dispersal of knowledge and like it's most of it is completely free you can learn about anything you want um, there are people who basically never went to school and just by you know watching free online tutorials they learn to be like a programmer or something and they you know created some company or something and, and whatever I mean the opportunities that are presented are absolutely huge we also see that uh, especially after the whole like Russia hacked the election I hate Trump no I don't hate Trump blah 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 you know uh, that basically mainstream media is kind of falling out of favor and there's all these alternative media sources that have become popular and you know fake news not fake news blah 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 and none of that would be possible without the internet uh, print versions of you know news magazines and newspapers and everything they're all kind of dying because you just get all your information online now and of course now there's this whole competition well is that is this fake news or is that fake news and well that's where you have to use your brain and think about it but you can't really you know go nuts you have to keep a cool head and, and think and think logically and you don't need in a sense that whole news thing is a very good thing because you know none of us actually need anyone to tell us what to think we need to figure it out for ourselves and we need to figure it out based on all the information available so when someone tells you Russians hacked the election you don't go and like clean your guns in preparation for a Russian invasion you go and you find more information to actually form some kind of educated opinion an educated guess even based on all the available data not just what you're told by CNN or whatever whatever you watch and this is the beauty of the internet so sure there are these these privacy problems and of course they're vacuuming up all kinds of data but you know there are also a lot of benefits I mean look at the number of videos on YouTube that teach you how to do stuff that was kind of like I think according to the bad guys that was probably like an unfortunate side effect of the internet is that all these people are connecting with each other and sharing all this information so the other thing is that we know that these companies and government agencies are hoovering up a phenomenal quantity of data and as I mentioned in another video that I made they have so much data that the way they're having to process it is not with AI they don't actually have AI yet we don't even know what AI is what they're doing is using things like machine learning where it's basically the box as I explained in another video it's a box and you've got all your data inputs and then they kind of set a few inputs like you know give me you know red shirts and you know bag of Cheetos and somebody who posted you know you know pro Trump things in the past you know X number of months or anti Trump things and you know whatever 
and of course it will crunch all this data and then it will it will spit out some results but what it actually spits out it, it's so much data and, and and the 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 actual machine learning algorithm is so complicated inside that basically all we can do is just kind of poke it with these various inputs to try, try to try and tweak it and then you see what comes out that's that's kind of the short version the problem is that there's so much data that this is the kind of thing they're having to use and it's not always 100% reliable um, even if it is 100% reliable it's like there's so much freaking data on every single person on the planet that like it's obscene right like have you done one of these online DNA tests and they'll tell you like yeah it's, oh, you know you go to like family tree DNA or 23andme.com or whatever and you get your DNA and they say here's your results and then you can go to these other these other sites like Prometheus and these other other places and you upload your DNA right and you go like well I don't want to do that because they're gonna have my DNA and it's like whoa and it's like <sighs> there's there's relatively modern research that indicates that uh, when it comes to DNA and genetics and everything uh, we've gotten many many things totally wrong there are a lot of things like we don't understand like I did one of these analyses for like, you know, what, what illnesses are you going to have? Are you going to die, you know, before the age of 45, you know? And basically what it came back with was there were like three things saying, um, you have a super strong heart. You are going to live to be 120. You can fly. And then there's the other thing saying, you will never be able to fly. In fact, you're, you know, whatever. And, and the next one was like, you're going to die of a heart attack by the time you're 27. Well, I'm a lot older than 27, so that that didn't happen and you know it was like for every pro there was a con and it's like you know you read the details of these things and it says oh it's like based on like a study of like 20 you know Japanese people or something and I'm going well <laughs> that's not very scientific it's not very thorough right but anyway let's say all that DNA data also gets thrown into the pool, the Google, Facebook, secret government mega pool of data on every citizen. It's like, for every human being on planet Earth, they've got like, they've got an amount of data that's like equivalent in size to the planet Jupiter. And it's like, it's like they want more and more, right? In the olden days, you had, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember going shopping with my mom and, you know, she would pay with a credit card and they had the little machine and, you know, they didn't, it wasn't like electronic processing. It was like, take the card and then put the carbon copy papers on there and slide the thing back and forth. And that was how it worked, right? Then a few years later, it started to become electronic and you had swipe cards and now you have the, 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 the little gold contacts and the card, the chip card, and you type in your pin code and everything. When all that happened, that was great because they could instantly collect all kinds, you know, all kinds more data then the in internet became popular and it's like okay they're, they're collecting more data and then Amazon you know Jeff Bezos created Amazon and it's like we're gonna track we're gonna have you know your credit card information and purchase history and then we're gonna have everything you click on and everything you view and 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 then they're gonna have advertisements on other websites and those other websites are gonna feed data and they're just gathering more and more and more data and now you're gonna throw your DNA data in there and and it's like you've got this massive quantity of data and the people who are collecting all this stuff are like someone who's addicted to like Twinkies and Doritos, you know? They just keep stuffing their faces full of like, more Twinkies, more Doritos, blah, blah, blah. And they, they just keep like stuffing it in and, you know, they, they start to feel sick, you know? And then they're like, oh, but I need more, blah, blah. And eventually, like, they, they can't even think clearly anymore because their brain cells are actually being replaced with like fake nacho cheese particles and like synthetic <laughs> synthetic whipped cream from the Twinkies, you know, and they're like, eh, and they just keep stuffing more data in, you know, and eventually they're just going to get sick and go kapunk and fall over dead because th they're going to need like a computer the size of the entire solar system to process all this data that they've got in everybody. And I think already we're seeing, you know, effects of, you know, the absurdity of all of this. And, and um, I mean, I think it's a good thing that people actually are kind of getting fired up about Facebook and everything. But as usual, I think most people are just going to be kind of fired up for a week and then forget about it. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that the NSA spying revelations and then it was CIA spying revelations. And it's like everyone was worked up about it for a while and then you, you, you kind of forget about it. And then it's like, you know, uh oh PGP is unsafe, and then, uh-oh, you know, DuckDuckGo is evil, and people want something to freak out about. And technically, there is actually something to freak out about. Um, 
but you can minimize your exposure, you can minimize your risk, but I think ultimately the benefits of all of this are going to outweigh the drawbacks because what the people who do this, you know, like the Twinkie and Dorito thing, what they want is total control of all information. I'm, I want all the data on you that I can possibly get. And I want to control all that information. You can't do that. The, the total amount of information available about a person. How many life experiences have you had? When you were five years old, this happened to you. And so you have a fear of of like, you know, kangaroos or something. When this happened, you know, I mean, how deep are they going to go? They're going to create psychological profiles on every person. And I mean, the amount of, of, of information that they would have to, they would have to get on every person is so phenomenally huge that eventually, like, it, it's all just going to explode and fall apart because it's gotten to the point of like absurdity. And as I said, you know, there are also benefits. There's dispersal of knowledge, sharing of information, um, you know, people from all across the world able to interact with each other, and um, I think in the end, maybe a bumpy road between now and then, but in the end, I think that's pretty much going to win out, because, um, I mean, we've seen this with things like the whole, um, these laws in Canada where the gender pronouns and everything, and suddenly everyone knows the name Jordan Peterson because he stood up and said, hang on a minute, like, I don't have a problem with this, but you can't turn it into a law. And Jesus Christ, he's, he's got a New York Times number one best-selling book, and he's go touring, touring all over the world, and, like, all the dude did was stand up and say, you know, hang on a minute, that legally this shouldn't be allowed, and, and pretty much everyone agrees with him, except for a small minority of people, and and you know it was the, it was the internet that allowed that to happen i mean if the internet hadn't existed then that would never have occurred right so yeah you can freak out if you want but freak out in a measured fashion and always keep in mind that yeah if you switch from a smartphone to a dumb phone that's better but there is no like magic solution just like the bad guys who are trying to vacuum up all this data and have like tons and tons of, you know, total information control, they're never going to get there. In a similar way, like, you can take precautions to protect yourself, your privacy, your security, but you're never going to have 100% privacy and 100% security. And I think at the end of the day, the important thing is to realize that we're talking about technologies and they can be used in this way or that way. You know, if you're worried about you know, Facebook spying on you, well then maybe you should get on Facebook and actually use it to your advantage and actually voice your opinions about things. When you see things that are going wrong in the world, you know, you should say something about it because chances are there are, I mean, I do this all the time on my personal Facebook page and like, <laughs> it's fascinating to see like, you know, I'm pretty blunt, you know, like I voice my opinions about things, political things, social things, whatever. And it's always fascinating because usually like three, four, five years later, you know, I'm friends with people from back in high school, whatever, and, and they never post anything, they never say anything. A few years later, invariably, I see them posting something. And basically, people, they have opinions about things, they want to say them, but they're afraid to say them. Because Big Brother is spying on me, and what about this, and like, what about my job? And that's actually a big part of the problem, because it's like, no, things are going to get better or not, based on what you and I do. So the hell with the spying, you know. Protect yourself as much as possible, but at the same time, realize that chances are there are a lot of people out there who actually agree with you and who feel exactly the way you do. And actually, you have this wonderful tool in front of you, and maybe part of the reason that there is all this stuff about, like, oh, your privacy is being violated, instead of running away from it, and going, no, no, I'm not going to use that. Embrace it even. Take precautions, sure, but embrace it and let your opinions be known and use it for what it's supposed to be used for, which is networking, right? Yeah, how about that? Well, there you go, I feel better. Uh, next video I'll get back to my, my, uh, my original plan, but... Um, I was just reading all this stuff and, like, had to get all that off my chest, so. 
For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.